Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Why the name Emmanuel? Well, we have this name, Emmanuel, uh, it means with you, and El means God. And put them together, it means, uh, sorry, God, Emmanuel means uh, with us, sorry, and El, God. So it is God with us. What a fine name. That is a wonderful name. Well, we saw last time one of the great names of the Lord Jesus Christ on Christmas morning wonderful and this is a clear prophecy that Jesus Christ is himself God people can't um, accept such things that Jesus Christ is actually God the Son here now the Jews I understand went to great trouble to dismiss this and I'll just give you one example that I came across in Isaiah 9 and verse 6 where it says his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty God the everlasting father the prince of peace this is the child who is born unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder um, there of this child the one of the uh, Jewish interpretations was to say that it means you can hardly believe it when I say it how they change it around wonderful counsellor the mighty God the everlasting father shall call him the prince of peace so they put they divide up all those words which go together and they slot in the verb just before the end and completely take out all the divine attributes that are given to the Son. Um, and it is, for people who should know Hebrew, it's absolutely appalling to feel that they can change it round and, uh, because the order of the words, it can be different in Hebrew. But to have all those attributes all given to the Father wonderful counsel of the mighty God the everlasting father shall call him the prince of peace it's just an absurd way and the bible never uh, would write things in that order his name is the name of Christ which is given there with all these wonderful attributes which are undoubtedly a description showing us that Jesus Christ though he's born of a virgin he's fully man he is completely God. And the amazing words that we had there in uh, chapter 7, that he, his name, the one that born of a virgin, shall be called Emmanuel. And it's... Um, so what we, we, we want to get... What, what, what I'm going to get to this evening is to talk about Emmanuel, God with us, and our understanding as Christians of knowing God with us that's the point but just a little bit of introduction of some of this um, uh, of the background of the of how this prophecy was uh, given at the time and I read that passage from second Kings because it shows Ahaz the king king of Judah at the time he had put his trust in Assyria to save him from Israel, the northern kingdom, and Syria, who had, were gathering uh, together to, to at attack him. But he put his trust in another country rather than in God. And so God said to him, I'll give you a sign. But Ahaz said no, verse 12 of Isaiah 7, I will not ask thee, neither will I tempt the Lord. He sounds all kind of holy in a sense, I won't tempt the Lord by asking him for a sign, just like we wouldn't. But, God has said to him, he's told him to ask for a sign. He's told him, trust me, ask me, test me, and I will give you a sign. 
and Ahaz won't. So this sign is given. Now it's not given to Ahaz, it's hidden from Ahaz. The prophets themselves, Isaiah, as uh, it says in First Peter, the prophets were, were um, we often talk about this, don't we, how they were searching the scriptures uh, for the meaning of the scriptures, of the prophecies, of the things that they were writing for us. This written for us. So the sign is given later then, but the promise is there. And how Isaiah understood this fully, uh, we don't know exactly. But here in, we know there's many prophecies, wonderful prophecies of Christ in Isaiah. So he really did uh, get a, a, a tremendous uh, prophecy from God and a word from God and had faith in God, of course, was very bold and brave in standing up against uh, evil and even kings such as Ahaz. Now, um, in chapter 8, Emmanuel is mentioned again in verse 8. Um, at the end of verse 8 there, of about thy land, O Emmanuel, Emmanuel's land. And then in verse 10 of chapter 8 of Isaiah, take counsel together and it shall come to naught. Speak the word and it shall not stand, for God is with us. And there, well, it, it, it could just say, for Emmanuel. It's the same, it's exactly the same. It's two words, Iman, you, and then El uh, after it. But he, it's written as two words, but we put it as one. And there it's just left as God is with us. So Isaiah knew that God was with him. He'd had visions of God. He, he had the very word of God given to him. He knew that God was with him. He, was, he had this confidence that he was but a man. But yet the fullness of it comes when this wonderful this counsellor, this mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of whose government the increase shall have no end when he comes. And so in uh, Matthew chapter 1, uh, which we were reading, uh, we see when, when Christ is born, this, these words are used again, that though his, his name is Jesus, He's also known as Emmanuel, God with us. Isn't that wonderful? So, uh, behold, a virgin, verse 23, is to fill the... Uh, sorry, verse 22. Now, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us, God with us. And in First Timothy, just one of the references, which it's important to have the authorised version of the Bible, because the edited manuscripts, they've, they've lost or rather changed uh, one of the words here, which is God, which is a very important word, and put he, which is obviously referring to Christ, but not saying that he's God at the same time, was God was manifest in the flesh, in there, without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. So, the Lord Jesus Christ was truly God who was manifest, who appeared, was uh, shown in the flesh, the Son of God. Now, Ahaz didn't get this sign. He didn't follow the signs at all. He followed after false gods. But are we following the sign of the Son who was born of a virgin who is God, is God, God with us, God, the Son. That there are people today, they say, well, it would have been all right if I was around uh, when Jesus was in Israel because I would have 
has him to follow and seen him. But the fact of the matter is, is that God now shows us Jesus Christ by the work of the Holy Spirit. So just as Isaiah believed, though Christ hadn't come, we have this sign that Christ was born when the scripture says of a virgin and we have it from 700 years 700 was it 734 when he spoke to Ahaz BC to the birth of Christ in is it 5 BC approximately and it's the same truth that the apostles believed and kept and saw and witnessed and recorded of course they weren't there at the birth of Christ the apostles such as Matthew but of course they've got the accounts from Mary and um, others who were there at the time so these accounts are included in the gospel accounts not as we said on Christmas Day not the first thing that was preached when St Paul preached he didn't preach about the birth of Christ particularly but when the gospels were recorded it was right that the apostles were able to put these accounts in of the things that happened and so encouraging they are to us to understand more fully the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ but the important point is that these words and descriptions that are used of Jesus Christ whether in the Old Testament or in the New are words that we can take with us and keep with us Emmanuel Jesus Christ is Emmanuel which means God with us Jesus Christ is God with us and I say to you uh, is that a sign which you're following or is it one which you've neglected and ignored the, the, the birth of this child it was not just a nativity scene it was God coming into the world and the name Jesus the Lord the Saviour the Lord the Saviour God the Saviour with us what more could we ask or desire when we are no better than Ahaz and sinners and will be prone to going after every other thing well I want to consider some of the ways in which God is with us in which the Christian it can be um, can be encouraged through all the uh, the uh, trials of life um, I've heard some quaint stories there one story I remember hearing um, was of, of, of a man that was driving along and he had his hat on drive with a hat on if you like and uh, his friend was in the car and suddenly the one man took his hat off and he said he looked round at him and he said it's the Lord it's the Lord it's strange isn't it and we maybe it was um, probably someone from the Principality of Wales no doubt with a slightly mystical view perhaps but we mustn't despise such things because it's true that the Lord is always with his people God is always all omnipresent he's always been present everywhere but he's particularly present with his people by the Holy Spirit the Lord dwells among us and we are to walk before God as having God with us I, I remember when I first became a Christian I often hear about God can see everything that you're doing and live knowing that God can see everything you're doing and that's true but it's it's that it, it goes more that that Christ by the Holy Spirit will be with us and even be dwelling in the people of God as as we come to Christ it, the we 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 can't overreact to being opposed to the extremes of the what they call the Pentecostal and charismatic ways of thinking about how God is working in as if we're uh, um, endowed with supernatural powers ourselves but through faith in Christ as we were saying this morning the Christian has a tremendous uh, treasury of riches in Christ 
And we must not underestimate the fact that this scripture, God with us, is true. And so we are to walk in a reverent way. We are uh, ambassadors of Christ, and yet there is this exceptional closeness that though we're not there in Galilee walking with him, he has promised to be with his people by the Holy Spirit. And though Christ is in heaven, he's, he's not on earth, he is with us by the Spirit. And the Spirit is another comforter of the same kind as Jesus Christ himself. And so uh, we mustn't only think of, of, of God as being far away. We must think of God with us. Just like it was in uh, the Old uh, Testament times, in, um, in First uh, Chronicles and uh, chapter 22, David, verse 17, David also commanded all the princes of Israel to help Solomon his son, saying, Is not the Lord your God with you? Is not the Lord your God with you? And hath he not given you rest on every side? And then he, 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 uh, for he hath given the inhabitants of the land into my hand, and the land is subdued before the Lord and before his people. Now, set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. He's, he's, he's with them, and yet they're to be seeking him with their heart and soul. Arise therefore and build ye the sanctuary of the Lord, of the Lord God, to bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the holy vessels of God into that house that is to be built to the name of the Lord. There is this dwelling of God with his people. And we know that there, that there is a much greater uh, being with God, to be with Christ, which is far better. For example, we think of the writings of the apostles, that we, we, we don't have the fullness of all this yet, but yet... I believe that it's right to say that Christians should live as having God with us. And certainly we have a, an assurance of the um, Holy Spirit in, in uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 9 where, where it says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you the spirit of God the holy spirit of God who is with the father and the son worship and glorified dwells in you now if any man have not the spirit of Christ he is none of his um, perhaps the, the thing that people should be expecting from knowing that the holy spirit dwells in us isn't that we should be performing miracles, but that we should be holy. I think there's, there, 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 there needs to be more emphasis on the need and the rightness of holiness among the people of God. There, as I say, there can be some uh, fake forms of holiness in the same way as there can be fake forms of thinking that God is in the car or something like that. But but you'd, we could almost say, well, better that than to be walking as if God isn't there. Because God is among the people of God and we have a, a holy and a reverent walk before God. Now, we have some helps in this and we have some challenges. And I just want to, to consider some of these uh, with you now. And uh, just just um, three or four of them. One. If we're, um, some of these are really more um, stories really. Um, I'm trying to 
tell you too many, too many stories. Um, but let's take a, a obvious point: is that we're we're told that where two or three are gathered together, there am I in the midst of them. Jesus Christ has has promised this for us. So I I hope you are helped in those prayers where we pray together beginning of the service that we were we were encouraged together seeking the lord saying prayers uh, together the this is one of the times when we can have great help to benefit from god being with us is when we meet together and of course it's always a shame when people can't make it to to services we feel that we miss them and we want to encourage them and we know that there's a real benefit to be found when the people of God are meeting together and God, yes, he's always with us. People say, oh, I, I can pray at home because he says, God's with me all, everywhere I go and it's true. But there, are, there's this special um, promise, not that we're, um, as it were, living out of each other's pockets as the expression goes, but that we are to be able to encourage one another and enjoy the fellowship of the the spirit together there, there are many obstacles in the christian life and god gives us one another as parts of the body of christ and he does promise this special presence with us a, a, a second um, way in which god does promise to be with us especially is in uh, when we go and speak of jesus christ to others it's the thing that people are most afraid of, but yet it's one of the surest ways that God assures his people of his presence with him if we will say the word Jesus. It's not a big word, it's not a long word, but we know what it means and often people know what it means and sometimes they may run a mile, but it's the word that's needed, Jesus. Uh, I heard one sermon and a man was having a walk with his dog and he heard someone uh, swearing. He took Jesus' name in vain at the top of their voice. And this preacher said that he rejoiced to hear it because he was the person that was in a, in a fret was actually crying out to God. But of course they were taking their Lord's name in vain. And while she might want to use that as an opportunity to say to them look if you were really praying in faith rather than swearing at God that would have been a good thing to have done but actually they're doing the very opposite so it was very odd to hear someone rejoicing at someone uh, swearing in that way but the name of Jesus is a powerful name even just the word and people know that as soon as you can talk to them about Jesus then you've really got somewhere You've really got onto the subject. And God is with you in that. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching in them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Well, we might not quite do all that in one go, but nevertheless, teaching people something about Jesus Christ and the Father and the Holy Ghost and the promise there in Matthew, lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Well, of course, we've said, yes, God is with us always, but especially in speaking about the Saviour. It's one of the best ways to know and feel God's um, grace and benefit and goodness and presence among us. The fear of man bringeth a snare, Proverbs says a snare but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe we, we mustn't be afraid some of, some, of, some of you are very bold in speaking to others about the Lord Jesus Christ and of course situations like at work you must be careful if you're supposed to be working and you're preaching <laughs> then you might be in trouble because you're meant to be working but there, there are times to talk and you've got to use some uh, is it common sense I think and pray for wisdom in such things. Uh, it's uh, well known that God is with people in troubles. 
Uh, Christians will often find, try and find a way out to avoid any kind of trouble where you think, oh, something troublesome's happened. There's something terrible's happened to me. And we get taken over by a sense of fear. But these things are sent by God. All troubles and trials are sent by God. And uh, many um, ancient Christians have said things like, troubled times are growing times, this sort of thing. This is where we see God in his reality coming close to us and helping us. A refuge, a very present help in trouble. Psalm uh, 46, isn't it? Psalm 46. You see these it's, it's, it's wonderful words. The words that, is this the psalm that kept Martin Luther? Certainly one of them. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. He's present, but in troubles, He's very present. That's even better, isn't it? And you would want God to be very present. And as we've said, the, the very present is really the future glory to come. But if we can get some very present now, we get a taste of that glory to come. So if we've got troubles, we call upon the Lord. He's our refuge and our strength. We don't we well, laugh at troubles, really. We must be uh, careful, especially with those of other people but God is in the midst of her God shall help her and that right early and that, that whole psalm there provides some wonderful examples of God's presence with his people in trouble so we have really much encouragement God with us uh, maybe a slightly less complicated, well a simple little story my grandmother always used to say to me, oh if you're going to the dentist or something like that she'd always say, she said well everyone else has been through it, they've all been to the dentist and they've been okay so I'll go and I'll be okay and I won't be afraid and that was a good, good, good way of thinking really but we can think a bit more probably than that and we can say well um the Lord Jesus Christ has been through a lot more for that for me, so I won't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Times of uncertainty uh, is, a, is another time to know God's will. There's times of change, times of being unsettled. Maybe we've moved house and we haven't quite settled in, um, or we're not sure about our future, where are we going to live. This sort of thing it can be quite unsettling. We've got something ahead of us, something to do. We're not quite sure how we're going to go for it. Remember, Emmanuel, God with us. Whatever, whatever's ahead, whatever the, whatever this year holds, for example, for some people, 2015, it might hold. Well, I wrote down this: trials, failures, bereavements, even success. We need the Lord with us so that we don't rise up in pride. Some people will be successful this year. Others will have hardships. Maybe poverty. Those difficult decisions to make. Problems, challenges, perplexing things. Things that we just can't, like those funny dreams you have, and you think, why was that there and that there? I just can't make hell or tail of it. Well, life's like that sometimes. But if God's with us, Emmanuel, that's the word, Emmanuel, lovely word, isn't it? It sounds like a beautiful name, doesn't it? Emmanuel. The, uh, the, the one who designed Princess Diana's wedding dress was called Emmanuel, but it wasn't nothing like this. We've got much better than, a, than, the, than the princess's wedding dress with our Emmanuel, because we've got God with us, not just some clothes designer. Whoever is ahead. Uh, th there was one in the Old Testament called Rebecca. She was the one who was to marry Abraham's son Isaac and Abraham's servant went out and there's a book with his title he said to her wilt thou go with this man I forget her father that said wilt thou go with this man and uh, Rebecca well, she didn't really know where she was going presumably Abraham had a very good reputation 
they were connected with their family so she could say yes I'll go to meet this Isaac who, who I'll be who will be my husband they'll be the two will be joined together but she hadn't even seen him but a bit like us when we go to trust in Jesus Christ we haven't seen him but his reputation at the front with a reputation like this and he is God with us. So the uncertainty, as I say, that Rebecca had of the future, it wasn't that uncertain, was it? Because she knew by reputation that she was going and by various things that had happened along the way, this was the right man. God has set all this up. We'll go. We'll go in confidence. And it's the same for us in Christ. We can't see the end from the beginning, but we know that the Lord can. And we know that he's working things for his people to bring us to his glory, to bring us through a trial, a change, a challenge, to stand up, to sit down, to turn around. And God is with us in this. This is our hope. This is our uh, confidence. Uh, well, we will take another one for Gwen, you're alone. And I've got... I have to apologise for giving this example, but I think after Christmas time it won't be used quite as often. And indeed the friend to whom it refers, I've got to give it to you with slightly more detail this time than I have perhaps before. And I will just say, my, my elderly friend Irene, who lived in Cornwall, who died, she, uh, the, the story is, is, you know, she'd moved away from her old church her family were all going away one Christmas and she was to be on her own that Christmas day. I asked her, would she be alone? She said, no. But I have very good company. It would just be me and Jesus, you see. God with us. That's the reality. Then there was a lovely, I've written it down, I've tried to describe it here in writing, a, a deep expression on her face that was at its most intense when she was thinking about the Lord. And she beamed out from her deeply wrinkled face and you couldn't see the wrinkles anymore. <laughs> she just would say she would be with Jesus and she'd say, lovely lovely and settles in a kind of a warm glow of happiness that God will be with her and is with her I'm sure she'd rather that I would tell the story that we're meant to tell every time the gospels preach about the box of precious ointment that the woman broke over Christ's uh, head and So there need not be any anxiety for the people of God. Whether we're alone, whether we're in battles or trials, we do have those encouragements there, though, in fellowship together with other Christians as much as we can to help us and to speak of Jesus Christ. Don't be afraid when you have, a, when you have opportunities. What, what is an opportunity, really? It's a person in front of you and a mouth that you've got. We don't actually, in some ways, some people say, well, I don't wait for opportunities. They're there anyway. It's just a question of speaking. And sometimes just, it's like, I don't know, well, yeah, taking the plunge, as it were. It won't, you'll find that God is with you. And that's what we want, isn't it? So we have all these potential changes ahead of us. God will be with us. He's the wonderful, the wonderful one. He is the, the counsellor that was said there in, in Isaiah. The, the Prince of Peace, the mighty God. And yet, as, as a God that sticketh closer than a brother. These are the, the, and so, though we have a closeness and a fellowship with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, as I said, we also have this sense there, 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 there is a 
a carefulness that some Christians have more than others and and it's to be highly commended when a person walks carefully before God. Not just taking it as it were as a perk, oh I've got all, all this help, but taking it as the responsibility that we have to live worthily, as we said this morning, to walk worthy of the Lord, to walk with God and um, to walk reverently and the, the, the Bible speaks of things like well our speech no one has got the perfect speech the tongue is like a little rudder and before we've been able to think it's spoken and I wish I hadn't said it quite like that and we could do a lot of harm and uh, if we we depend upon the Lord but this help that we have there do be encouraged this is not to be a curse to the people of God, is it, that God is with us? Yes, it is a, there is to be a sense of awe that we're in the Lord's presence. The preacher is meant to preach as the oracles of God with, and we're all meant to be in, 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 in a sense of fear and trembling before the Lord. But yet we have this combined with much assurance. It's a, it's a, it's a, a real richness in Jesus Christ that we have. And this is what is to be um, to be desired for our others, for our, our neighbours who are lost. If we have a real love for our neighbours, yes, we, we might give them some food or something, but they really need the bread of life in Jesus Christ. And it's from him alone. And well, you may think, well, I'm a bit stuck. But people, if you are stuck and you can't do anything else, no doubt some people come and they they help you. They come and do some things for you to help you, and you can, you can speak to them. That you've, you've been able, through all that you've been through, to trust in Emmanuel. It's a nice name. If you don't want to mention Jesus' name to begin with, you can say, "Do you know Emmanuel?" And then they can say, "Is this Emmanuel? Wow, God with us." And you can explain a little bit. About it. We have to be very encouraged. If God be with us, who can be against us? We have this confidence, this some of these things we spoke about this morning, thankfulness, joyfulness, as we uh, um, walk with the Lord and run with the Lord and wait upon the Lord to renew our, our strength. And I didn't mention the valley of the shadow of death. Sometimes life gets to the point where we know that we're coming to an end and there is a valley of the shadow of death. And even there, the psalmist could say, in the most difficult times, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. That was greater. It was a greater thing. What, what was the greatest thing? To be in the valley of the shadow of death or to have the Lord with him? It must be that the Lord's with us. And so it is even as we come to death, come to our death, they say, uh, John Wesley apparently, when he was, when he was about to die, he was on his deathbed. He was in his 88th year, friends had gathered round his bedside and they Held, he held their hands and said to each one, farewell, farewell. He knew it was his time and at the last moment he raised his hands and with the small strength that he had, he uttered the words, the best of all is God is with us. And he said it once more, I think, the best of all God is with us. Spurgeon's preached a sermon given it that title it's been given and then Mr. Wesley went to be with God in, a, in that way where we are actually with Christ but by the Spirit of God we can still say that God is with us and we have not to fear but to trust him and to have this wonderful sense and ask for God's help day by
okay, well, I hope that maybe even something for the year ahead be for some help. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we, we do wait upon thee to renew our strength. Lord, we look to thee in faith, trusting upon thy word. Trusting upon the Lord Jesus Christ, his blood, his righteousness. And Lord, we look to thee, asking thee to renew us in all the assurance we have in the gospel of Jesus Christ. That he has done all for his people. That Emmanuel is not only with us, but that he came as the Saviour to die for sinners. And he ever lives, and the price is paid for all that trust upon him. And we're saved by grace, not by works. It's all for thy glory. We thank thee, Lord, for the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that it's simple enough for a child to believe, to understand, and to repent. And Lord, we pray that thou would be, especially with each one, we thank thee for thy promise that when we gather together in thy name, thou art with us. We pray we may go out in the power of thy Holy Spirit. And again, that thou would be with us, that we may speak of Christ to others. We pray, Lord, that thou would remind us with any difficulties, trials, challenges, uncertainties, that thou art Emmanuel. God with us and we have confidence and peace with God and Lord that we may walk in fear of thee but with confidence as well that we may walk in a holy way following all of the things that thou dost teach obediently humbly with repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ Lord, teach us to love thee as we should and our neighbours as ourselves. In the Lord Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. We sing over the poem, Psalm 116. Psalm 116, page 262 in the, in the uh, metrical Psalms. Sing from verse 9 to verse...